Hey friends, welcome back to Homeschoolology. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Nikki. I'm a homeschooling mom of four. Got a seventh grader, third grader, and five and three year old doing a combined pre-K level this year. And on this channel, I like to talk to you guys mostly about secular homeschooling, but also a little bit about motherhood, having a larger family, traveling with a larger family, and everything in between. Today's video, I'm going to be sharing Penwheels level four with you guys. So I have just recently printed it out. We are almost there. We have almost, uh, we're about, I think she only has like two or three units left in um, level three. So I have gotten it printed out and I thought this would be a great time to give you guys a little bit of a peek inside. Um, I did receive this curriculum for free for my honest opinion from um, Rooted in Language. So I'll be linking their information down below for you guys. But today's video, I'm gonna be kind of giving you a peek inside. Let's talk about, I guess, let me give you like a kind of a general overview of what Pinwheels is for those of you who are not aware. Pinwheels is a complete English language arts program. When I say the reason I am emphasizing complete is because it is literally the only thing you need for teaching, learning to read, learning to write, um, and grammar and re um, like literature or, or I guess, do you call that literature study? I don't know. Learn, you know, teaching the way stories are written and, and how stories go and all of that stuff. It is all there, all included in this one program. All of the pieces, one program, um, which I absolutely love. For my oldest, we are using like five or six different programs that I have to piece together and pull together. And it's just so much work for me. And I absolutely love that Pinwheels is all together, all one thing, all we have to get out is this one thing, do this one thing, and all of the pieces are there. And I just absolutely love that. The downside to that is that yes, Penwheels is a lot of pieces. You are going to see when I get it all out and lay it all out, it is a lot of pieces. There is a ton. And because you're printing it yourself, now you can have it printed there. They do provide a link where you can have it printed for you. But because you are printing it yourself, you do need to set aside a good chunk of time to work on getting these pieces all prepared because it is a lot of pieces. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's a lot of pieces. But I do like to think of it like this. I, with my seventh grader, I have five or six different curriculums with all of their pieces that I'm using all together. So if I were to put that into one basket, it would be a lot of pieces, you know? So just because Pinwheels has a lot of pieces, it's your full curriculum. It's all the things all together. You only have one that you're using rather than having five or six or seven that have pieces too, you know, it's the same thing. So yes, Pinwheels is a lot of pieces. Yes, it is a lot of prep on the teacher to get it all together. But once you have it all together, it's easy sailing from there. It is very open and go, very scripted, very easy to use. Um, and if you just are, you know, if you stay a little bit organized and have all of your pieces all in one spot, it's very easy to get them and use them. Even though it is a lot, it's not that bad. <laughs> um, so I, when I get it out, you might see a lot of pieces, but understand that, you know, it is everything that you need. Here is Pinwheels level four. Um, this is the instructor's guide. It is huge. I split it into two books just to make it so that I didn't have so much um, that I was carrying around. And I prefer to have spiral bound than a big fat binder. So um, I just split it into two. I wrote I wrote part two and part one on it just to keep it keep myself separate. But that is what I did to make it not so big and bulky. And, and this is all the resources that it comes with. This is kind of how they tell you to put it together. But I do put it together a little bit differently. So um, it comes with like a reading kit A and a reading kit B and then some appendix things I found it really like um, time-consuming and frustrating to try to get pull from this reading kit a and then from reading kit B and then find all the things that I and it just seemed like a lot so what I started doing was combining my reading kits a and B so this is unit 16 this would have been in reading kit a um, and I had all of these things well this isn't a good example let me jump to unit uh, a Unit 17. So this is how I do it. This is unit 17 and unit 17 had things in reading kit A and in reading kit B. So what I did was I just I just put everything in reading kit A in here. So this was all reading kit A. 
And then I stuck the reading kit B, which is the readers, I stuck it right behind the end of my reading kit A. So it made it just super simple and easy for me to <clears throat> not, you know, have to be flipping through a bunch of things in a big fat binder. One other tip that I do have for you is that I split my reading kit my level three and my level four into two different smaller binders. I don't like those big giant binders. I think they're cumbersome and heavy and things fall out. And so I did split these into two smaller binders and I am liking that system. Um, so that is what I do in here. But basically what you get in these reading kits, let's go back to 17 since that's what I showed you before. You get word lists for them to read over or to use these words as like dictation. Um, you get, paragraphs for them to read over or for you to use as dictation depending on where your child is at and um, these are copy work passages that you can use you can also use those for dictation and it does give you in the in the appendix um, it does give you lined paper let me see if I can find that that you can just copy off for them to use so and it gives you several different different kinds of lined paper bigger smaller um, book style and pages with room for drawing so um you just print those out as you need them i've just made copies of or printed out several copies of them and i just keep them in the front of our reading um her <laughs> language arts binder so this is something that you build sorry so i have a new setup here with this new camera and it's, it's a little bit challenging but you build this language arts uh binder um and so i just keep in the front of it i just have made several copies and i just keep them right here in the front and we pull them as we need them um so <clears throat> yes you can see this is a lot of pieces i do have a lot of things going on here however remember it's an all-in-one it's everything you need for literature for grammar for reading for phonics for all of it all in one place you don't have to go back and forth to a different bunch of different curriculums so that is how i organize all of this stuff and let's look inside the educator guide. So if you have an older copy of the educator guide for level one, um, it has been revamped to look more similarly to this level. So if you've already had it printed out and you don't want to print it out again, it's okay, don't worry about it. Nothing has really changed in it per se. They've just broken it down to be per day, like these new guides are, rather than just a bunch of information uh, you know, all in one packet. Um, and I really, really, really like that improvement of having the days, having it broken up into this is a reasonable expectation of what you can accomplish in a day. So if you would like to have the updated version, if you are okay with printing um, some things again, go over there, send them an email. I'll put their email down in the um, box and they will let you know how you can get the updated version. Educator guide, you get your a little note to you and then you get your table of contents. Here are the units. Here are what you're gonna be learning in each unit. Um, do I use this? No, not really. Um, so let's look at unit 17 since that's what I showed you in the reading kits. Um, as you can see here, here is what we're going to be learning in this unit and that's why I don't really use what's in the front of the book because it's right here for me. Um, it does give you, this is the breakdown that is in all the levels of what you're going to be learning and when you should kind of be covering it, like in what order. Um, and this is all that was included in the original. Um, and it was useful, but it, you know, it kind of was a little bit tricky. And so what they've done now is broken it down into days. So this will give you a little bit of what you need to know before you start teaching, and then it'll have day one. So every, anything that's black and white like this with no, no color around it is just thing information for the teacher to read over. These yellow boxes here, this is your script. So, so all you have to do is basically open it up and start reading. Um, yes, I try to read over this stuff when I get a chance, but if I've gotten behind on it and I haven't had a chance, then I just open my book and I start reading on the, on the yellow things. And basically we have all the information that we need to have. So it is very, very open and go. But to give a better experience, you do wanna try to read this stuff as well. Um, but you just read the script. Here's an activity about something that you would do. Um, and then something that I really, really love about these is all the different activities that you do. It really does help solidify what the student is learning. Um, and my, my kids really enjoy the little games and activities that are here. And this is where it starts talking about um, dictating words. So you would take those word lists that I showed you in the reading kit and read those out to them and they would write it on lined paper. And so that is how it goes. As you can see, it's 
just the same thing over and over and then you get to a day three so day three they would ex be expected to do a draw and then write and then they would do um the story of two and then they would <clears throat> do this activity and then they would get to day four I have found that with my daughter being older, we can t normally get between two to three days done at a time um, in about 30 minutes. But if you're doing this like with a first grader, you're probably gonna spend about 30 minutes on just one day, one section, day section at a time. So that is an inside look at Pen Wheels level four. Before we go any further, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. It really does help us out over here. So that was a look inside the Pinwheels Level 4 program. So the other levels do look very similar to that. So if you are, you know, if your child is ready for Level 1, know that it, especially the updated version is going to be very, very similar. Um, and But I hope this was helpful for you guys to kind of see inside of it and see that maybe it's not as intimidating as you thought it was. Um, if you have any questions about it, I'm happy to answer them down in the comments or direct you in the right direction to find the answers that you need answered. Uh, yeah find you the answers that you need um, and I think that is all that I'm going to share with you guys today so I hope you'll come back and chat with me again real soon don't forget you can always find me over on Instagram at homeschoolology and I will talk to you guys again real soon bye